Hi, I'm Mike Sandifer, owner of Northwest School of Fly Fishing, author of fly fishing books, and teacher of fly fishing. It's been a lot of good time making this video for you. We made it for you to enjoy. Enjoy it. Like all fly fishermen, we love to watch good stuff in fly fishing. If, uh, if you like what you see, I would encourage you to subscribe. Uh, we have over 50 instructional videos on fly fishing on our, on our uh, site. Uh, you can always contact me via Northwest School of Fly Fishing. And if you're interested in the book on the water, Memories from an Old Fish Hobo, uh, you can get that on Amazon or through our website, northwestschooloflyfishing.com. Enjoy. trying to maneuver that fly out there and then get it to, to, to float naturally when this wind is tough. But again, I've been all over the west and I've fished everywhere in most rivers out here in the northwest and that's just a, a never ending battle, just wind, 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 wind. To the point nowadays where I do get wind and it's, it doesn't really matter. I'm so used to it that you just adapt to it. And uh, you, oftentimes you just go to sleep at night listening to the wind through the trees. And it's like a, a serenade, like Mother Nature putting you to sleep. Instead of count, counting sheep, I can, I can listen to the wind blow through the trees. And uh, it's all part of fly fishing, no matter where you go. Winter's a magical time for a fly fisherman. For me, it's, a, it's really the, the end of the season, and it's also the beginning of the season. Uh, most folks think of their season beginning as sometime in early spring or late spring, but for me, my new season begins in winter. Winter is a special time. Uh, you're the only one on the water. Uh, no one fishes when it's cold, but winters are the best time to be fly fishing. Uh, the midge, the, the cryonamid midge, it hatches every day, 24-7, 365. And wintertime is the time of the midge. Uh, when I see fish rising, they can only be eating the midge. Uh, there's a beauty of winter, it's quiet. It's just you, the water, and the trout. There's no one around, you have it all to yourself. It's befitting for me to call winter my beginning. I think uh, when, I, when I assess my life in fly fishing, uh, when I look back on it, uh, I really think and truly believe uh, that the fly fishing was just a, a small part of it. It was, it was for me, really, the, uh, the metaphor or the end or, or an excuse to go somewhere new and formulate a, a new adventure for me. Uh, 
I think that that's what it's been for me after all these years. And it just uh, got to the point in my life where uh, outside of faith and family, uh, fly fishing was all I ever thought about it. You know, six decades later, fly fishing is all I ever, all I ever think about. It's all I, all, all I want to do. Uh, and I'm not at peace when I'm fly fishing. It's amazing that uh, <laughs> I can go out all day long and, and, and when I drive back home, it's like uh, I'm in a really good mood. And I think from, from a, a standpoint in today's society where, where everything's fast moving and, and uh, everything's very quick and violent, um, we have a lot of uh, turmoil in, in the world today. Uh, anytime that you can get a break and get away from that, uh, I think fly fishing is the ticket to do that. And it certainly has been for me. And, uh, uh, but beyond that, you know, we have to look beyond fly fishing. We have to look at, at the popularity of it today and we have to look at, at uh, our resources. You know, these, these rivers that we have, our, our Tailwater Rivers and our Freestone Rivers, they're special and we have to keep them that way. Uh, you know, uh, between all the agencies that run them and all the people that want to fish them, uh, it's our job, really, uh, to uh, uh, take care of our rivers and our streams uh, so that our grandchildren can have the same experiences that we had growing up. And, uh, and I, I think that's my driving force from this point on, really, is, is protecting our resources and uh, 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 making sure that uh, we continue to educate uh, the, uh, the fly fishing uh, uh, base and, and the, and the non-fly fishermen, how special these rivers really are. And as, uh, as life goes on, I think that's pretty much probably going to be my mission in life. Yeah, yeah. Protect what we have. And when you've had joy for six decades, uh, it, it scares you when you see rivers that are abused, uh, taken advantage of, sucked dry, uh, over-recreated, uh, over over-managed. Uh, it, it's, um, you know, it's something that we can do and uh, that's probably what I'll end up doing the rest of my life. Tailwater rivers are throughout America and in terms of the West, the great rivers of the West are tailwaters. Tailwaters are rivers that are born from the bottom of a dam. And they're famous. We have many, many rivers. Most famous rivers are tailwater rivers. And the reason is because the water that comes out of tailwaters is highly nutritious and temperature controlled, perfect setting for trout. The water has been fertilized by Mother Nature. And that fertilized water creates incredible biomasses that creates incredible insect life, that creates incredible trout that zone in to narrow search images where casting tiny dry flies can catch you the largest trout in the river. Tailwater Rivers, it is the drug that encapsulates all fly fishermen. There's something special about Freestone Rivers, and even more special in the spring. Freestone Rivers are just that, they're free. Um, they're free of any, any kind of uh, human obstruction. They're born from the mountains. Uh, they're full of wild trout, hungry wild trout. Uh, I feel the freest in my life when I'm on a Freestone River. Uh, in the spring, uh, you'll have them all to yourself. Uh, no one's coming up on, to a Freestone River in the mountains uh, uh, during the spring. They're waiting to warmer weather. The fish won't wait. The fish are in the river. And it's really special when it's quiet. It's just you and the river. And you start to listen. And the river begins to talk to you. If you listen, the river will tell you what our secrets are. And that's what I like about Freestone Rivers. It allows you to listen. You're in the mountains. You're as closest to nature man can be. 
and it's just you, the river, and the trout. Unlike Tellwater Rivers, where uh, a lot of people will be there, you'll be fishing with a lot of people, and people tend to take your mind off of the river itself. Freestone Rivers, they're the greatest gift God's ever given man. In Silver Creek, Idaho, the anglers given a, a gift from the trout gods. Every year for four or five days at Silver Creek is the brown drake hatch. Just the word drake connotates huge. These are large brown mayflies and the fish just come up and just devour them. It's a short hatch, meaning it's only four or five days long. But boy, if you catch it right, it can be nonstop action. No other place can I think of where there is a, a mayfly hatch where the trout become punch drunk on, on, on green drake naturals and it's just as simple as locating a pot of fish and putting your fly right through the middle of them. There is a, a state that fly fishermen can find themselves into and it's called being in the zone. Being in the zone is, is very philosophical in the sense that it becomes a meditative state that just happens to you without you really knowing it. Uh, the concentration is so intent on a river that it will put you in the zone. And, and what I'm talking about the zone is, is uh, say I get to the river and, and uh, I'll, I'll say to you, I'll meet you in five minutes and we'll have lunch. And uh, you know, two hours will go by and, and uh, it's only felt like five minutes to you that's in the zone and, and the zone is, is being in the zone is different for everybody but but for me uh, the zone is where it's at that's that's where you lose yourself in thought that's where you lose time that's where your focus is so sharp that anything outside of that is 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 unable to crack into the zone and eventually if you add it long enough, all fly fishermen will enter the zone. Whitefish. Yahoo!